everyone. Welcome to episode two of the SweatNet Strong Women podcast, where we share stories of amazing women living in our communities. I'm your host, Seal, and today we have Orkel Little. She is a SweatNet ambassador, flywheel sports instructor, but you may know her best for the ability to bust a move. Welcome to the show, Orkel. Hello. <laughs> I'm so glad you could join us. Yeah. So I have to say, like, right off the bat, so you and I go back just a little ways, <laughs> other than mm -hmm. coming and actually taking one of your um, dance classes, but um, back at UNCC, and I cannot, I was trying to think, I was like, when, when was that? Like, how many years ago was that? It had to be, a, like, 2015, because that's when I first started, like, teaching, but we had like um, a group fitness training session where we were bringing outside people in to come lead us through workouts. And they told us that you were coming and I was like fangirling. I was like, oh my God, I follow her on Instagram and I'm gonna get to meet her. And I was like panicking and I had the time of my life. And then, yeah, and then you like, I started teaching at Block and then you showed up and once again, I was fangirling and sweating like, oh my God, she's here. Um, but yeah, you're kind of a big deal. So <laughs> I, laugh, I laugh because like, I remember teaching that class because I know EB and Sophia really well. And like, when uh, EB asked me to come, I was like, of course, like, this is gonna be a class. Like college students, I get to hang out. This is gonna be great. You were a big hit. We were talking, well, we also died because it was hard, but we literally had the time of our lives. <laughs> oh, it was so, so much fun. So that's where we go. That's where we go back. And then Fast forward, I see you, I go into a dance class and you're teaching and I'm like, we had a freaking jam session. It's always so much fun with you. I just love it. Your heart, everything about you is just amazing. <laughs> so this is so fun. So I'm so glad that, that you were able to be on episode two. So this yeah. is great. <laughs> so talk, since we are already on this path of dance, let's talk dancing. So how did you get your start? Oh, so not even start with dancing. So I remember when I was like a little girl, my mom put me in like ballet class and I lasted like two weeks because I didn't want to wear a tutu. And so she took me out of dance and I started playing soccer. So um, it really just started with me just loving sports, loving to move and like be challenged. Um, but dance was never really on my radar at all. So when I got to UNC Charlotte, um, I've always had like some kind of tie to the fitness industry in some capacity. Either I was working front desk or I was working as an assistant manager at one point at Snap Fitness. Um, so I've always had it in that capacity, but never on the other side as being an instructor. And it was one day I was at work, I was working front desk and the boxing instructor didn't show up. And so I went upstairs to EB and I was like, hey, the boxing instructor didn't show up. And I jokingly told her, I was like, I'll teach the class. And so she wrapped my hands she gave me a workout. She said, you've taken this class before, go downstairs and teach the class. So I literally got thrown into it, had no kind of like rhyme or reason about like, why am I doing this? I just said yes. And she saw something in me. And then from there, you fast forward, I got my group fitness certification. I taught body pump and yoga and Pilates. And one day, once again, we had a situation where they needed somebody to teach a dance class. And I was like, yeah, I can do it. And if I would have known how I felt during the class, I would have never said yes, because I was awkward. I was fumbling. I did not have choreography. I was just making things up and people were doing it and they looked awkward because I look awkward. But <laughs> yeah, I think the reason why I came back to dance is as an instructor, getting more opportunities to teach different things. I said, said to myself, like, why am I not trying it? And I started teaching mixed fit and where it was com a combination of like hit style and dancing. So I felt a little bit more comfortable and then it blossomed into me kind of doing my own thing. And that's how it kind of came to be. It was not by choice. It, it shook me. <laughs> well, I think, I think just movement in general, like is amazing. And I think if you're open to it and you're saying that right now, like just being um, willing and versatile and, uh, not getting stuck like in one box, especially in fitness, if you can be versatile, like it can take you places. Right. Which I think is so cool. Okay. So let's jump to 2019, which was quite a year for you and talking about Ooh. being versatile. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to fill us in because there's a lot that went on in a short amount of time. And uh, one, you got married. 
Yeah. Congratulations. Thank well, that's, you. Like a, that's a big deal in itself. <laughs> and then, and then another thing is you had an audition. So I kind of, I want you to kind of package that for us for 2019. Cause it was all right from what I understand all at the same time. Yeah. So another thing that happened is we also, my husband, well, my fiance at the time, we bought a house. So not only were we getting married, I was auditioning for Julianne Huff. I was, we had just closed on a house. Um, we're moving in. This is all happening two months before I get married and it was insane. And, but when I think back about it is there's no way I would have been able to do it without having such a supportive husband and my family and my friends got my bridesmaids and maids of honor. Like, who I don't know how any of it would have happened, but I think the most important thing is when you're faced with so many things happening at the same time, you have to have a support system because if you don't, it will fall apart and you will feel like you're falling apart. So for me, it was just having that comforting pat on the back, like, it's okay. I know this is a lot, but we're going to get through it one day at a time um, is kind of why I chose to just keep pushing through it. <laughs> So what things in this whole process, and, and, and this is where I think strength comes from, or, you know, we're talking about strong women, being strong in, in, you know, being strong personally, being strong professionally, what through the experience of the audition, what was that like for you? What did you gain in that experience? What, what is it that you would like to share as far as like, you know, auditioning for Julian Huff and how the, all that, you know, came about and, you know, what did you gain through that whole process? Yeah, well, the whole thing, like, it was one of those decisions that was, like, a last-minute thing. The audition, like, closed on, like, a Saturday, and I applied Friday night, like, not thinking anything of it, wasn't expecting to get a response whatsoever. I was just like, let me just answer a few questions, send a little 30-second video of me dancing, and we'll just see what happens. And then it happened, and then you're faced with the thing of, like, oh, crap, it happened. So what are you going to do? Um, and in that moment, you have to make a decision do I believe in myself just enough to push through it and to try, or do I feel like backing out now? And it was very tough for me. Um, I think that you kind of have to just have that attitude of what's the worst that can happen. Someone says no, which in the grand scheme of things is what happened. But um, the training uh, was like crazy, but the audition was even crazier. So um, I fly out to LA and it's a three-day process where cuts happen every single day. So I walk into a room of like 60 people and these are like trained dancers. Like they dance at like dance companies. They're like, where do you dance at? And I'm like, uh, I have no <laughs> dance background. I like to dance at home. Um, <laughs> so it was really intimidating. But um, when we started to audition, um, I was the first one to go. Like, they were like, who wants to go first? And I just raised my hand, and I was like, oh, my God, Raquel, why did you just raise your hand? And the next thing you know, I'm dancing in front of Julianne Huff and her team with, like, all these people behind me. Um, but it was an incredible, like, experience, and I learned so much from it. And honestly, I've met so many amazing people along the way that really just solidified that it was not a mistake and it was not like just a crazy sequence of events, like it happened for a reason. Um, and I think it really did prepare me for kind of where I'm at, like physically now. Um, but definitely the three day process was a lot. It was draining. But on the last day of the cuts, um, they, Julianne Huff would bring each person in one by one to give the, you got it or you didn't. And I walked in and she looked at me and she had this huge smile on her face and she says, congratulations, like you have been chosen. And I was like, oh my God. And she's talking about, would you be willing to relocate? And I'm like, yes. And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I just got a house. I have to go get married. Like, this is insane. Um, but I think in those uncomfortable positions, if you just say yes, go with it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? You know, so that is kind of what pushed me. Um, and then you fast forward to where I had to do the teacher training for it. And it was a three week thing. And it just so happened to be falling on the week of my wedding. So <laughs> I fly out to LA by myself. And I'm there for about a week and a half before I have to fly day, 
fly um, back home uh, to get married. And so I perform, I do all the things, and then I come back home. So it's the night before my wedding, I'm steaming my dress, and I get the call that I've been cut. So in that moment, it was, okay, life's not over. You're about to experience the best day of your life by getting buried tomorrow. Like, what are you going to do? I cried. I let that stuff go. And um, I woke up the next day, had the most amazing wedding where I couldn't even imagine it going any better than it did. But I think the hardest part was after the wedding where you actually have time to breathe. You're not stressing about flowers and, and bridesmaids and walking down the aisle and not falling on your face where it really kind of like sinks in and you have to be like, okay, something really crazy you just went through and something really sad just happened. So I think the after was the hardest part where I went into a really deep depression for about four months and I'm still working my way through it, but it was really tough to have something so crazy and awesome happen, like getting married and then something really sad happened, like one of your dreams being crushed at the very same time. So it was, it was very hard to balance and, you know, your path to whatever you have goals towards isn't straight. It's like windy, it drops off, great things happen, horrible things happen, but there's something where there's that equilibrium in between where you kind of have to be at peace with yourself and say, instead of saying like, well, it didn't happen, but what's the good that I can pull from it? And what I can say is what I learned was to have so much confidence in my abilities to stop saying that I'm not a dancer, to stop saying that I'm not good enough for somebody like Julianne Huff to notice me, to say that I'm not good enough to be able to create something out of nothing. Um, I think that I've just grown so much as a person and just realized my own self-worth. And that's more than I could have ever asked for. And that's more that, than anything somebody else could have given me. But just that realization is what really was worth all of it. That's awesome. I think that this is so important um, for you to share. And I appreciate how much like your openness and your willingness and being vulnerable and exposing like the real feelings that went on. A lot of times when things happen, we try to hide or push it away, uh, but to be open and then find the good in it, which is what's going to bring us to the next thing. Yes. yes. <laughs> so let's talk about, let's talk about all of this. So all of this has happened. And, you know, I feel like what's getting ready to happen for you next is absolutely like what's amazing that has come out of this process for you. So I want you, I want you to dive in real quick and tell us what's next for you. So my big dream that I've always had is to open my own gym or create something so I can give back to others. And what I've done is done a lot of soul searching through depression and seeing, finally seeing that light at the end of the tunnel. Um, that dance is where I come alive. It is what has brought me out of such a dark place. Being able to move my body is such a gift. Um, and it's a gift that I have wanted to give to other people. And so I've created something called Open Heart Movement, um, OM for short. And it is a 45 minute dance class where we move, we shake, we yell, we scream, we let things go. We really express ourselves in a way that makes us feel so confident, so strong, and just feel seen. Um, and it's something that I was going to unveil before COVID happened. And then I was like, okay, now's not the right time. I want to be able to do it in person. I don't want to do it virtually, but sometimes things happen in life and fall in a way where there's no right time to do something. It's just a matter of pushing forward and just going for it. And so that's why I'm happy to announce that I am going to be launching and doing the first test class this Friday coming up. So I'm super excited. Um, but it's just, it's more than a dance class. It's not just about getting the moves right or looking a cer certain kind of way when you dance. It's about that feeling that you get when you do it, just moving your body. And it's something that is for everyone. It's not. I was, I was just getting ready to yeah. ask you, is this something where somebody needs to have some kind of dance ability to come and be a part of this? No, you can literally bring your kids. You can have your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whoever and whomever you are can show up. And I always tell people the hardest part about 
movement is just showing up to do it. When you feel like sleeping all day, you don't want to move. You want to sit on the couch. If you can just get up, if you can breathe, move through that uncomfortable feeling, that's when your breakthroughs happen. That's when that, that lighthearted feeling starts to show through and it's totally worth it in the end. And I'm just really excited to show people what I've been working on. <laughs> oh, we are so excited for you. Like, I can't wait to share more about like where they can find you. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end. Yeah. Before we do that, uh, I think this is a great moment to ask you this. What advice would you give someone that has a desire to do something, but, but might be scared to take the chance? Yeah. So with that, I can only speak from my experience, but even though my experience isn't the same as everyone else's, I think that we all kind of have a common line where we can agree on. And I think that a lot of the times there can be a million people that love and support what you do and who you are. And it's very easy to focus on the one or two people that don't support it or are not in your corner. And I think that at the end of it, you really have to know your self-worth and know that you were put on this earth for a reason. What you're bringing to people is so important because you're not alone. Like what you're doing is going to touch one person, maybe two people, maybe hundreds of people. But if you just have a little bit of faith in yourself that if you just push past that, I don't believe in myself or you know, you're your own worst critic, but if you can push past that, that is going to bring someone so much joy and then they can share that with somebody else. So at the end of the day, when you don't have 100% of the people in your corner, it's okay. Like you just need that one person, you know, that keeps you going. And then that's honestly yourself. That my friend is truth. Like you are speaking truth, sister. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we can go on for, we can go on that just alone for a yeah. really long time. But I so appreciate like this. That's why this podcast to me was this particular episode was really important was because there is a story here to be shared and one that um, we can all um, learn something from and you have a voice and I appreciate you sharing it. So I'm going to move into something that's completely has nothing to do with any of this. It's more oh, on the fun side. <laughs> so <laughs> question. We have to have a fun question. Um, what gets you in zone? Is it a favorite song? Is it something that you wear? Like, what is it that gets you in zone? Oh man. So it's like a combination of things. I have like two sides of my creative process. So the first side is either I'm in where I'm listening to a really like slow song that gets you in your feels where I just need to cry and just let some stuff out. So I'm either there or I'm at the completely other end of the spectrum where I have my bathrobe on and I have my panda slippers on. I've got my headphones in. I'm probably 100% of the time listening to Meg the Stallion and I'm twerking in our kitchen. And I do it so much that my husband <laughs> doesn't even react to it, but that gets me going. Like I have to move my body and it might be me moving my body like I'm twerking or I'm shaking it <laughs> or I'm completely still and I'm crying and I'm just letting some emotions flow in me, through me and out. But there's no in between for me. It's either that or that. And my husband, thankfully, loves both of them. And he is there like, if you need me, let me know. Um, but I feel like you have to do both. Like, you've got to have a balance. And for me, Meg the Stallion, she's that girl and crying is the other. So <laughs> I just love that. You got to do it. <laughs> <clears throat> well, before we go, I, I just want you to share if there's um, something else on your heart that you uh, want to leave with everyone. This is like a perfect moment to do that. And I'm um, just kind of open things up and, and let you run with it. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot that I could say, but the one thing that I have really had to like work on is just the simple act of showing up. And that can mean a bunch of different things. Maybe it means showing up to your work. Sometimes that's hard. Maybe it means showing up for a meeting because sometimes that's hard. But sometimes just showing up for yourself and in that sense it is like whenever you're sad or you're depressed or you're going through a really rough time sometimes it's just hard to get out of bed but if you can take that step of sitting yourself up planting your feet down and rising up that's the first step and that's the hardest one but if you can do that which i know everyone can 
um, I think that's when your breakthroughs happen. That's so perfectly put. So I just like, <laughs> this whole podcast today has been awesome. And I can't Woo! wait for this to, to go on sweat that and be shared. Uh, I want to thank you, Orkel, for today. Thank you for yeah. being on here. Thank you for sharing your heart. Like, uh, but I do want you to share <laughs> where everyone can Woo! find you, how they can get in touch with you, what's coming up next. Like, just go ahead with that. Yeah, so um, you can follow me on Instagram at at O-R-K-E-L-L-E-E-E, -E -E, um, which is my personal Instagram account. And if you are curious about open heart movement, you can follow me at open heart movement, all one word, all lowercase, um, and be ready for some amazing goodness coming soon. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait. I'm so ready to get moving. Yeah. So everyone, thank you for joining us and tuning in to the SweatNet Strong Women podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to like it, share it with your friends. You can find more information about SweatNet on sweatnet.com or our Instagram at sweatnetclt. You can follow me at It's Seal Smart. That's I-T-S-C-E-L-S-M-A-R-T. I will also be hosting the Be Amazing Weekend here in Charlotte on October 16th and 17th. To learn more about this event and how you can participate, you can visit us at beamazingweekend.com. You can also follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Be Amazing Weekend. Tune in next week for our next episode of the SweatNet Strong Women podcast.